Howdy again, gang. Big Ed. Here to talk to you about acoustic pickups, bare, gone, fishing. One of our subscriber buddies uh, posted on my Richard Thompson acoustic rig video, hey, what about a chat about acoustic pickups, which it's a testy little subject because over the last 30 years, I've tried all of them. And any of you that have tried to amplify your acoustic know it's a pain in the ass. Um, I started out with the Martin, you know, the original Fishman Martin standard um, piezo uh, pickup. And while that one was very resistant to feedback, it was spiky as hell, and you could cut it, notch it at like 1.2 kilohertz, and yet still it sucked. It was, uh, as Bear Gun Fishing says, that Dave Matthews tone, <laughs> which none of us but Dave Matthews seemed to want. Um, but for many years, that was it, right? Um, then the fashion went into piezo microphone combinations, and that was better, but it seemed to me that like, okay, so if you brought too much of the microphone in, you got feedback, and bringing any of the piezo in was, I don't know, to me was defeating the purpose of the combination. I mean, sure, you got that percussive, non-feedbacky kind of vibe, and it did amplify it, but it wasn't great. It kind of still sucked. Um, very, very problematic. And then uh, it morphed into, then some people were using microphones, but, and that was a really good choice. Um, you know, I, I saw a James Taylor video recently where he's still putting an external microphone that attaches to the outside of his guitar and goes over a sound hole. Um, problem originally with that, when they first started doing that, is you couldn't get too loud. Uh, so you couldn't really monitor yourself properly. Then came along Sunrise. Sunrise and magnetic pickups became very, very popular. Um, I tried Sunrise. It's a, their magnetic pickups are really good for a lot of reasons. For one thing, you don't really have to worry about the feedback too much. Um, they're pretty responsive. Um, they're very effective. Um, it's a more visceral kind of feeling because it's like if you're playing an electric guitar pickup. Um, you can play pedals through uh, a magnetic pickup much easier than you can with any other type of pickup. And I can tell you, I, you know, piezos are okay, but contact mic pickups are problematic. Um, any other microphonic pickups through pedals, you're going to have issues. So Sunrise was really good for that. Uh, Richard Thompson uses Sunrise. Emmy Lou Harris has used Sunrise for years. The only thing about magnetic pickups, and at one point, and I still have uh, so that Martin right there, <laughs> that guitar, which was my first guitar, like the first guitar I ever bought with my own money right there. It's actually a Sigma Martin D35 that has a Fishman Rare Earth magnetic pickup in it. Sounds amazing, amazing for that particular guitar. Um, the only other issue is, though, I'm not using that for pure acoustic sound. It's I'm using it for slide. Um, if you want the purest acoustic sound, magnetics, they seem to lose some of that um, delicacy, if you will, um, and some of the dynamic because it's a magnetic pickup. So there was that phase that we went through 
um, magnetic pickups and rare earth, sunrise, there's a bunch of others. I even had a Dean Markley one in one of my guitars once. Wasn't too bad, actually. Um, that wooden one that you put in the sound hole. Um, the only problem was it had a cable that you had to deal with to go out of your guitar. So we went through that phase. And then in the last 10 to 15 years, we've kind of come a long way. So um, DTAR pickups were very popular and I used them. Um, one of the reasons they were popular is they ran on 18 volts, so they had much higher headroom, they were less spiky. So for once you had an under saddle pickup that was a little bit better than the old piezos and was less spiky, had more headroom, but you got the best out of them by running them through really good preamps. And DTAR made something called the Mama Bear, which is a great preamp. Nowadays, we have Grace uh, Industries, whatever they're called, makes uh, Grace makes a bunch of different really, really great high-end preamps. Other companies do as well. They all are pretty terrific, though expensive. And then, um, you know, LR Bags was mixed in here with their... Um, with their under saddle pickup and many, many people there, you know, this whole thing has gone in phases and it's understandable because we've all been searching for better and it gets incrementally better as we go along. And when LR bags came out with their under saddle pickup, the filament went beyond the saddle inside of the guitar and thus was microphonic. And that can be good and that can be bad. I heard many people complain about that, you know, a microphonism, microphonic element of it. But it was warmer. It was a little more natural. It was less spiky, less peaky. But there were people who complained about feedback issues and that it was microphonic. So we've taken incrementally little steps over the last 30 years. And then we got into K and K pickups. And when I discovered K and K pickups, that was sort of a revelation in the last five or six years, however long I've been using them, because it almost felt and sounded like a microphone because it was three contact um, panels, if you will, contact mics that were attached to the actual top, the underside of the top of your guitar. And that was really kind of gave you more, like a lot of body, a lot more um, texture and the feel of a real acoustic instrument. But there's always a but it was a little bit boomy. You had to cut a lot of low end on those things. Sometimes you had to throw a high pass filter at like 200 Hertz to even deal with it. And even then you had resonances. But I had used K and K for several years. I used K and K still on my Weissenborn. And the reason is, is um, I combine a magnetic in the sound hole that I run to pedals and then the K&K &K that I run to a Fishman Jerry Douglas box, preamp box, where I dial in my imaging. It's the only way to call it. It's, you know, IRs, impulse responses, but they're imaged as well because you have to EQ them and do other wizardry to make those, those IRs sound good. So that brought us into the next phase, imaging and impulse responses. And that's where we went for a while and we're still there. Um, there were very many good products. You know, Fishman made the Aura. They made the Jerry Douglas for Dobro and slide guitar. And that's one I use. I've used the Fishman Aura extensively. Zoom, believe it or not, and I talked about this in a previous video, did an amazing job imaging body models and body shapes of those models for many, many acoustic guitars that sound really 
terrific. And basically they will, I think what they're doing is taking impulse responses and then molding them, imaging them, to make them sound more like the body. Why would they do that rather than the impulse response? Well, some of you probably know the answer to this. If you take an impulse response of anything and do it correctly, it still needs to be EQ'd because that impulse response will be tremendously boomy. Really boomy. So you'll have to take a lot of low end out of it and it depends on the image. You'll have to look at, on a, look at a spectrograph and see. Um, fortunately, there are tools to do that and take out accordingly. You'll see where the hump and the resonances are and take them down. Well, Fishman, Zoom, other companies have done that for you. Then you get into uh, companies like Tone Dexter, which is co-owned by James May, whose pickups I now use, which are another evolution of the K and K. What's the difference between a James May and a K and K? Briefly, he made a pickup that deals with the resin. It's the same thing. It's three contact mics, but the jack has a built in a preamp that allows you to flips. It's, it's a little bit of a pain because you have to decide which switches. They're like the dip switches on the Chase Plus pedal, but they're very effective and they actually work. So his system allows you to tailor through little dip switches on the jack itself for your particular guitar and body shape, how to deal with those resonances. And there's some other filter wizardry going on, but I switched all my K and K to James May, except for the Weissenborn, because it was too much of a pain in the ass. And frankly, the Weissenborn sounded good with the K and K, especially blended, so I left it alone. James May sells a conversion kit if you already own K and Ks so that you can convert it to his and it's quite simple. Uh, any guitar tech can do it. My guys did it for me, didn't cost that much. And it made, I would say a 50% difference. So if you already love the K and Ks and they are great and you wanna make them 50% better, that's one option. Or he, James May sells a package of his pickup from the start. You don't, if you're not, if you don't have a K and K and you just want to start with his system, which is similar to the K and K and not do any other adaptation, you can do that too. But to get back to the Tone Dexter, what James May and his partners have done with Tone Dexter is you play your guitar through your choice of microphone and you actually sample your imaging your own guitar, and then you can tweak it. There's EQ built in and other factors that you can adjust in the Tone Dexter to tweak your sound, save it, boom. There you are when you go to play live, you won't have feedback. You'll actually have the sound of a real microphone and it'll be your guitar, your body, your wood, your hands, your choice of microphone. So that's where we've kind of come, in my mind, um, in brief. I mean, I could go on for hours about this subject because it's racked my brain. Uh, I think I've probably put more time into acoustic pickups than any other gear-related thing over 30 years, and that's really saying something with all the gear I've owned and tried. But gone from piezo all the way now to uh, contact mics. Now you can also do contact mic, uh, the K and K James May systems with a piezo combined. There's all these different combinations. For me, where I've ended up is the contact mics and imaging, IR slash imaging, and then running it through a good preamp can't hurt after that. But you'd be surprised. I mean, let's say you spend two to three hundred dollars on a pickup system. I've played through a hundred and twenty-five dollar Zoom uh, imaging acoustic pedal. It's, I think it's called the A4, the A41 or whatever. I've got it. 
And I've also played through the Zoom AX3, um, which was the older model of that. It's harder to find now, but it's also more expensive than the cheaper one, which I don't know. Um, and I have the Fishman, two Fishman Auras, one for, like I said, Dobro and one for regular guitar. And those are great too. The great thing about the Fishman is when you buy that pedal, you can automatically link online and download their app and have hundreds more images that you can download. You can mix and match wood, body size, body type, shape, brand, scale length. I mean, you name it, you can do that. So for me to answer Bear Gone Fishing's uh, question, I like the contact mic imaging combination. If I had the best of both worlds, if I could do anything I wanted to, I would do what I'm doing in my Weissenborn and that's have a magnetic sound hole mic and, it, and, and the contact mics and I have them split to a stereo split. So one, the magnetic, I can send to my pedals, the acoustic, coming out of one jack with a special cable. It's a Y cable, but it's a one jack. It's one output jack on that guitar. And so one, the magnetic goes to pedals, my pedal board, boom, and then either to a direct box or an amp or soundboard. And then the contact mics go to an imaging box. In that case, it's the Jerry Douglas, but it could be an Aura, it could be a Zoom, whatever. That would be, to me, the best of all worlds, but you can't always do that. So for just pure acoustic, right now, I like James May system combined with um, imaging. The great thing about imaging is no feedback. You got a lot of other effects available to you in these, these, in these imaging boxes. You know, I have an exciter a little bit in, I've got a compressor, I've got an EQ, I can put on distortion if I want, I got reverb, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these boxes are really amazing innovations from where we started 30 years ago. The pickups are better, the interfaces are better, that's where we're at. I hope that this industry gets even better further in the future because we have still a little bit of a way to go. But my amplified acoustic guitar sounds a lot better than it used to. And just because I use contact mics and imaging doesn't mean that's the best for you. I know it's a pain in the ass to try everything because it's expensive. That's just from my journey where I've ended up with, I would say, do a lot of research, ask a lot of questions, um, talk to people that, ha that have what you don't have to make your decision. And hopefully that's been helpful. All right, see you next time.